Pam 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 pam. No 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 no. If I'm not allowed to sing, you're not allowed to sing in this series. All right, then I stick to telling bad, jokes. Bad <laughs> jokes. Have you got a better one than last time? Well, I have one. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's a better one. Okay. Well, let's roll the intro first and listen to it after that, shall right. we? Okay. <laughs> Hi and welcome back to the series reviewing your underwater films with another video that we'll review for you guys today. But as promised just before, before we get into whose video we'll be reviewing today, the amazing Sebastian has a new amazing joke for you. It's your stage. Oh, thank you so much. Mm. Well, Matthias, what's the first rule of uh, shark diving? Don't get eaten? No. You don't have to outswim the shark. You just have to outswim your body. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's not that bad, actually. I remember well, that. Hopefully. But today is not about me and not about my joke telling talents. No, but you know what's cool? I'm the fastest swimmer than you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, only, you're so small. The, the, the shark thinks you're a snack. Of course, yes. <laughs> so, moving along. Whose film are we watching today, Sebastian? <laughs> Today's film is from John Pierce. And he was diving on the Maldives with a uh, GoPro. Nice. And two solar um, 3,800 uh, video lights. And, um, yeah, and M, that's it. <laughs> and M, that's it. Let's M then watch that film by John. All right. <laughs> All right, let's do this.
very relaxing. Mantis like in the Lake of Zurich. Nicely done, John. Thank you very much for submitting that film to be reviewed here within this series. And before we go into reviewing or into giving out our, um, our critique about this film, let's just take a moment and thank our sponsor of today's video, as well as the entire Reviewing Your Underwater film series, which is Die Fork. If you guys don't know who Die Fork is, well then it's probably time to find out who that company is, because they're making the unique and one of a kind smartphone housing that makes you capable of using the touchscreen of your smartphone even while being underwater. And this gives you a complete new experience using smartphones to capture those amazing underwater adventures of yours. But they're not only doing that housing, they're also manufacturing all kinds of accessories like trays, lenses, tripods, um, lights and so on. If you want to make use of the special offer that DiveFork gives our users as part of their sponsorship, go and have a look at the link down in the video description below, which will take you to the DiveFork webshop and will automatically apply a 6% discount on any purchase that you make from their store. Thank you so much DiveFork for sponsoring this video and also for giving out that great discount to our viewers. Thank you very much. And, and apologies. I want. I just want to say I'm still waiting for the first person um, submitting a video 
filmed on an Android or an iPhone in a dive fog housing. True. That would be fantastic. So, True. guys. You know what We're to waiting. do now. <laughs> We're waiting. Yes, if you do have a dive fog housing and you want to take part in this review series here, we'll even prioritize your video. Here we go. Send it in. <laughs> it will be the next one that will review in the series. All right. So enough with that. Let's get back to John's video. And uh, let's talk about that. Um, do you want to go first or shall I? You can go first. With one. Excellent. I wasn't even going to give you that chance. <laughs> <laughs> Just asking out of, you know, business as usual. friendliness. So thank you so much, John. I really think that you've captured a very nice summary here of what one can expect when you um, think about diving in the Maldives or you go out for a dive trip to uh, the Maldives. I particularly enjoyed the variation of your shots. I think you did that very, very nicely by not just capturing uh, not just capturing wide angle shots, but also going and trying to catch some uh, medium shots. I know it's really hard to capture macro shots, especially using a GoPro. Um, you've, you've captured some really good medium shots, some that got very close to being a macro shot, not quite, but uh, I think that uh, it also helped that you were using a tripod, a gorilla pod, as we saw right towards the end of the video, where we could see one leg of the gorilla pod sticking uh, or coming into the frame from uh, from the bottom. So I think that that helped a lot in getting these, these closer shots, these sort of close-up medium shots, very stable and usable. And I'm thinking particularly about the shot of the Nemos that we saw. There was a little uh, boxfish, a yellow boxfish that we saw as well at one point. Quite a cute one. Really yeah. cute. Um, and yeah, for these type of shots, you've done the perfectly right thing by using a tripod to capture them uh, rock steady and that has definitely definitely helped getting that variation in there also i think that you've done a really good job in matching the colors in between the different clips um and uh, there was a couple of shots where the colors don't look exactly the same but with the gopro it's always a little difficult there as well because it does the uh, auto white balance mm. and depending on the lighting situation and the ambient light that's coming in it might just give you a little tint uh in the in the auto white balance uh so that might make it challenging or more challenging to correct that in post-production but i think you've done a pretty good job like looking at it it looks like a very a uh, uniform piece with very uniform colors with little bits and pieces here and there but nothing too dramatic i'm very happy with how you've uh, how you've corrected and matched those colors so i'm going to pass it to you now sebastian and uh, with the question what do you think john would have to work on um yeah uh, well first of all Please. i have to mention if you guys uh liked the footage and the uh, the animals you see, you saw on the video, there are still some places left for our uh, trip on the Maldives in November, December this year. Very I true. I will put it uh, down in the description. It's not many. It's one single spot left, and it's a male share in a twin cabin. That's the only spot that's left. The first one to reach out to us is going to be the lucky one. So, email us and. Uh, secure that space to come and dive the Maldives in the end of November with us. Didn't want to put in any promotion, but I just was thinking about the Maldives. And That's good. That's why I have you right here. There. Thinking <laughs> of everything. Perfect. Well, anyways, talking about um, some improvements for John. And the first thing uh, I was thinking about is the duration of the shots. I think the best example was the octopus. Mm -hmm. um, the shot itself, or like the, the scenery he captured was very cool. Like you saw the behavior, animal behavior, yeah. but it was way too long. And yeah. with the length of the clip um, itself, that comes shaking it with it, and and it's hard to keep the uh, the the attention of of the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I would, yeah, I would shorten the the, the clip or, or the clip length overall. And for that, a special clip with the octopus, it's easier to make some cuts in the mm -hmm. for the for the um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the exciting uh, uh, pieces, and then only use that. Just the leave the other ones out. Yeah. Leave the stuff that is shaky or that doesn't show yeah. like an interesting behavior. Leave that yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, good point. I agree. Um, I got a good old one, which is uh, spots on the lens. 
And but this one, I think, was not uh, by any dust or dirt. Um, I think it was because the camera was tilted up before yeah. and it got some bubbles on it from the air. Um, I think it's very hard on a GoPro to to um, see it on the display. Mm -hmm. um, but it's yeah, always agreed. good to keep it in your in your mind if if you're filming um, tilted upwards and you get bubbles, just turn the camera on. Yeah. Especially with a GoPro, it's really easy. Just turn it around, clean it up, yeah. and yeah. then and then use just it check. again. Just check that there's um, nothing on the lens. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what I liked was uh, the use of light. He, he used it in several occasions. Um, the one thing I think he could improve is if you're working with the, like, or you're filming bigger animals like the mantis. Yeah. It would be very nice if he used the lights there as well. Because, like, I think there are one or two shots where you see the, the mantis uh, passing over, uh, over him. Very close. And yeah. it's where it would be nice to, to light them up. And because I think the solars are quite capable of giving a wide, uh, wider beam. They, they to, do to, have to, a wider um, beam. Yeah to light up the bellies yeah um, i think it's hard because like when it's getting too bright it, the camera will struggle but if you practice mm. uh it's it's a very it's a very nice option maybe also don't have the lights on full power but just yeah. dial them down a little bit so you just get you know you don't want to have them like over out uh, you don't want to have the bellies blown out but just as you say just a little a little brightness um onto that belly onto that uh, white area just makes the image pop a little yeah. better a little more yeah yeah i agree and uh, yeah one more thing i have on my on my notes here is the the music you said um you like the music it's, it's chilly it's yeah. easy going yeah. and uh, yeah it's true the music is nice but i think for the kind of footage we see and the kind of of uh yeah really kind of footage and, and behavior we see it does not fit that that well mm. Um, the problem is like it, if it's easy and calming, and then we have a long, a longer uh, a film, it's really hard to keep your viewers' attention over over longer yeah, uh, yeah, period yeah. of time. So something more catchy, uh, a little bit more um, speedy, something like that is is mm. is easier to keep it. I'm not saying it's it's bad in in any way. It's just more like it fitting to the footage. Um, it's hard to uh. to keep up. The, yeah, the yeah, I see what you're saying. I can't kind of see what you're saying and uh, it makes sense and uh, maybe it's also to do with the length of the entire film we've got like yeah what was it like seven minutes or something so it's a rather long film so that's maybe something as well that we can uh, we can mention here john um if you but this goes in the same line as sebastian said before if you try to cut down the length of the individual clips particularly that that um octopus clip um the entire length of the entire film will come down as well and if you can keep it below well ideally somewhere between two and three four minutes uh if you can keep it below five minutes even that's that's okay um and then maybe the music's going to be feel it's going to feel less repetitive as well. Yeah, because like there are very interesting parts in it, like the, the octopus changing its behavior, the the stingray yeah. uh, hunting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's not boring at all. It's like mm. it's just the duration of it. It's yeah. uh, to fill it up with footage. Excellent. Do you have anything else that you want to pass on to John? No, I'm good. Excellent. I'm good too. So let me sum it up for you, John. Uh, what we particularly enjoyed in your submission is the variation of different shots that you showed us from uh, wide angle to medium shot, sometimes even close to being a close up shot uh, and different perspectives that you were showing us as well. We also enjoyed the use of the lights that were on your gear and the tripod that made it possible for you to capture some really rock steady shots, uh, even in the sort of medium to macro or close up section. For next, for your next project, stuff that we um, we would like you to work on is to think about shortening certain clips. So don't keep them in for like the entirety of the clip that you've recorded, but pick the best spots of a certain clip. And you can use several like sections of a clip, but don't keep the entire clip in there. It's going to shorten the entire length of your complete movie, and at the same time, you're going to get rid of sections of individual clips which are not ideal so you just you know keep the best parts of each of these clips in your um in your final edit so thank you again john for submitting this film within this series here and i hope that the tips that we um, have passed on to you today are useful and you can make good use of them in your next underwater filming project if you guys have a film that you would like us to review then please send us an email to 
contact at matthiaslevo.com. Put in your email a description of what camera you used, uh, what uh, light you used, like John did, and uh, put the link to your video um, in the email so exactly. we can uh, download it and then watch it there. And review it. And <laughs> obviously review it, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. As always, we are going to be putting uh, the links to John's video down in the video description below, as well as the link to his YouTube channel. He's got other content on his channel as well. So feel free to head over there and have a look around on his channel. Maybe give him a subscription, uh, say hello from the two of us. Um, and while you're at that, if you're not subscribed to the channel here, then it's probably a good time to do so now, right? Hit that like button, hit that uh, notification bell, subscribe to the channel so you're not missing out on any of the good content that will be uploaded here in the future. Did I forget anything? No. Nope. Well, maybe you could tell the guys when they sending in the email. It takes some time until we get to the email. Good point. Yeah, we've got a waiting line, a uh, waiting list of about 9 to 12 months right now. Uh, that's just the amount of submissions that we've received for the uh, for the reviews here. There is a way how you can get in front of the line though, and that's by becoming a member of our YouTube channel here. Pick the Underwater Filmmaker membership that will give you, apart from other benefits like discounts on online courses and stuff, it will also give you the um, prioritization on your submissions. So as soon as you send in a submission, or if you already have sent in a submission, that one will prioritize, will be watched and reviewed by us pretty much right away and uh, published here on the channel within a couple of weeks instead of 9 to 12 months, really. Well, Thank you for reminding me of that. You're welcome. That's why you're here for. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll bring this to an end, guys, for today. Thank you so much for watching and for your time. I hope you got something out of today's review. And if that's the case, then please leave a comment letting us know what you've learned from today's review. Um, other than that, it's not much more to say than to wish you a fantastic week. Keep capturing your awesome underwater adventures. And we will see you next week. Thursday, that is. Take care, guys. See you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>